Ahoy, hoy, my good boy! Dr. Oddcoitus, what are you doing here? Let's get straight to business! I want half of your ad revenue! What? Why? It was my idea for you to make this YouTube channel as part of your therapy. You're a sick boy, Andrew, and you need to be distracted. But this is my work. You can't have it. You're behind on your therapy payments, and I want my money. Oddcoitus has got to get paid. How much are we talking? After insurance, you owe 23 big ones. $23,000? No, $23. And that's with interest. Yikes. Okay, fine. You have been a big help over the years. Have a seat. I'll get your money. That's a good boy, Andrew. Evil blew all our money gambling, so I'll have to find Good Andy's piggy bank. There you go again, my boy. Always blaming your problems on the bad personality. It's time you take control, Andrew. Hey, Doc. Evil. Here's your payment. Arr! Oh, please, no. Arr! Arr! Damn it, Evil. Why did you do that? What? The slot machine is calling my name. Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile. And every November, after fighting hordes of mindless shoppers and devouring a turkey, we like to watch a zombie movie. Today, we're heading to Lovecraft Country and reviewing Reanimator. Andy, is this anything like Frankenstein? Oh, it's better than Frankenstein. Yes, my love. The film is the directorial debut of Stuart Gordon and is loosely based on the 1922 H.P. Lovecraft story Herbert West, Reanimator. Most consider it to be Lovecraft's poorest work, and even he was unhappy with it. Lovecraft wrote it only because he was paid $5 for each installment. That's about $88 to $94 in 2024. One night, Gordon was talking to friends about there being too many vampire movies, and how he wanted to see a Frankenstein film. A friend suggested he read Reanimator, and Gordon tracked down a copy from the Chicago Public Library. Ooh, I like the library. Me too. It's where I watch my hentai. So that's why we're not allowed at the library. At first, Gordon wanted to turn it into a play, and then a TV show. However, Gordon was told that the only market for horror was in feature films, and he was introduced to producer Brian Usna, who directed the cult classic Society. Well, son, I guess you're right. I am a butthead. <laughs> Andy has a strange taste for movies. Usna liked what he read and convinced Stuart Gordon to shoot the film in Hollywood due to all the practical effects. Originally, the script had no humor, and that came later during rewrites and the actual shoot. This B-movie has it all. Glowing green syringes. A zombie cat. And Barbara Crampton's bush. So, let's dive in, shall we? Not into her bush. At a medical university in Switzerland, the authorities are called to check on Dr. Hans Gruber. No, not the villain from Die Hard. Though he does die hard. Herbert West, a medical student, has brought his dead professor back to life. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not a side effect. His eyes normally gush blood. <laughs> Apparently, the dosage was too large. Unless you're Nikki Six. You killed him. No, I did not. I gave him life. Yeah. Look at how much life he has. Freshly expelled from the Swiss University. Red flag number one. West transfers to Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts. Arkham? Red flag number two. We're introduced to med student Daniel Kane, who doesn't know when to let go. She's gone. Also, all you're doing is fluffing her pillow. Her arm also falls out, and the corpses start holding hands. It's never too late to find love. The actress who plays the lady Dan tried to save was a, quote, dildo enthusiast and hid dildos all around the morgue. I learned that during my research, and now you have to know it too. Dan is introduced to Herbert West, who immediately clashes with Dr. Carl Hill, accusing him of stealing Dr. Gruber's work on brain death. Your theory on the location of the will and the brain is interesting. Nice to meet you. And also, you don't know shit. So derivative, in fact, that in Europe it's considered plagiarized. He did cross out Dr. Gruber's name with a crayon. The Dr. Hill role was originally written for Christopher Lee, but he turned it down. Instead, he was in The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. A decision he regretted. We also learn that Dan is banging Dean Halsey's daughter, played by Scream Queen, Barbara Crampton. At least it gives me a chance to housebreak you. Dan is using a piddle pad. Does he have a Talking Heads poster above his bed? Foreshadow much? Dan is also looking for a roommate, and here comes Herbert to turn his basement into a laboratory. I startled you. Yes, you did. Hmm. Evil, you once turned our basement into a lab. Yeah, but I was cooking meth. So that explains the explosion. <laughs> Ignoring Megan, Dan makes a deal with the devil. Well, I'd you like know, you'll never even know that I'm here. That's what they all say, and then it's bongo drums at 3 a.m. In class, West once again clashes with Dr. Hill over brain death and the location of free will. An irreversible conclusion. Perhaps it takes... Mr. West, I suggest you get yourself a pen. Tomorrow, West is going to be smashing typewriters. You know, you should have stolen more of Gruber's ideas than at least you'd have ideas. Mr. West! Mr. West! What other ideas did he have? At Dean Halsey's house, we get the feeling that the creepy Dr. Hill has a thing for Megan. So, your daughter is seeing Kane, eh? You think that's wise, huh? Shouldn't she date an older man? A brain doctor? Whose hair is definitely not a toupee? Oh, come on! It's not like he keeps a file on Megan with a lock of her hair. Run, bitch! Run! Like every annoying college roommate, Herbert talks about death a lot and has a secret. Wondering why she hasn't seen Dan's cat, Rufus, Megan wanders into Herbert's room. What a health inspector finds in a Chinese restaurant. West claims he found Rufus with his head stuck in a jar, but Megan isn't buying it. Meanwhile, Dan is upset that he wasn't even left a note. What a note say, Dan. Cat dead. Details later. P.S. Dinner's in the fridge. It's cat. 
What the hell is this? That is none of your business. Andy, is he working on a new flavor of Mountain Dew? No, he's developed a fluorescent green serum that can reanimate the dead. Like a dead cat. That night, Dan is awoken by hissing and rushes down into the basement. <laughs> Slow down, Dan. Let's take this one step at a time. Herbert's latest test subject is Dan's dead cat. However, the reanimated Rufus turns feral and attacks. Us, trying to trim our cat's nails. Okay, Wednesday. I just gotta get the front claws now. Please don't hurt me. It's the second greatest cat fight in cinema. What's the first? That's for dragging your ass on the carpet. Intrigued, the gullible Dan gets roped into Herbert's plan after realizing the serum works. And by works, I mean creates uncontrollable, murderous monsters. Do you agree that he's dead now? Do you agree that he's dead now? Hmm. Rufus would usually land on his feet. Don't expect it to tango. It has a broken back. Rufus was known to tango. Birth is always painful. West, then let it suckle from his teat. In the short story, they steal the corpse of a construction worker who died that morning in an accident. They inject it, but nothing happens. Later, the corpse wakes up, causing them to flee, knocking over a lantern and burning down the farmhouse. It's him! Rufus is like, no autographs, lady! Security! Tase her! Amazed, Dan tells the Dean about the serum, but he doesn't believe him. And so is your daughter. What have you been doing with my daughter? Learning all about the human anatomy! Fisting? Instead, they're both kicked out of school. To save their asses, Herbert and Dan break into the morgue for a little late-night resurrection. All we need tonight is a specific conscious reaction. He's gonna play Booty Me Down to see if they start twerking. In the short story, they pay people to rob graves for them, but eventually end up having to do it themselves. They inject a cadaver with the glow stick juice, and it goes berserk. <laughs> When I get woken up from a nap. Yeah, maybe don't pick the corpse built like a professional wrestler. He's mad because the shot was in steroids. The zombie is played by Peter Kent, Arnold Schwarzenegger's stunt double on 14 movies. They are nearly killed when Dean Halsey shows up to die instead. <laughs> See, Dr. Halsey? It does work! I have the same determination when shaving my balls. After tearing down the bodybuilder and not letting a fresh corpse go to waste, West seizes the opportunity to reanimate the Dean. Dan, we can bring him back to life. And if that doesn't work, they can try the pet cemetery. So they throw the Dean on the slab, inject him with the reagent, and he wakes up after 17 seconds. I'll show you. Wow. That shot 
was just a monster energy drink. Doctor, welcome back to life. He wasn't going anywhere. He has tenure. The bus must get off at the morgue because Megan also shows up and West pins everything on her father who's gone mad. <laughs> he regrets getting a college roommate. In the short story, Halsey succumbs to typhoid and West injects him with a new serum. The Dean wakes up turned into a mindless cannibal. The Dean then knocks out West goes on a killing spree, resulting in a dozen dead, before he's captured and put in a local loony bin. Don't worry. Do worry, West is gonna play his mixtape. Dr. Hill puts the Dean in a padded room. He can't hear you or see you. That's a one-way mirror. Like he has in his bathroom. I know you're all by yourself now. <laughs> he may be undead, but he still knows when a creep is hitting on his daughter. At home, Megan finds Dan waiting for her, and she demands answers. He's not insane. He's dead. No. <laughs> no. At least she's taking it well. After a lobotomy, Dr. Hill discovers that the Dean is undead and wants to know Herbert's secret. I want your discovery. You can have my discovery. And maybe my Netflix. But not my Disney. What? No, little buddy. Keep up. Dr. Hill then uses his power of hypnosis on West. You will do what I tell you to do. How Stuart Gordon convinced Jeffrey Combs to star in From Beyond. It won't hurt. I promise. After discovering Herbert's serum, Dr. Hill decides to steal that idea too. Genius, Mr. West. All the pages! They're numbered! Reagent. Seriously, how the hell does he make this shit? Maybe it's a jar of Slimer's spit. West responds by doing what any rational scientist would do. First he distracts, then Herbert West attacks. Plagiarist. West knows that plagiarism isn't a way to get ahead. He was a horrible doctor and an even worse bobblehead. West then reanimates Hill's severed noggin and body, creating a strangely sentient zombie. What are you thinking? How do you feel? He feels about 180 pounds lighter. The doc's body then sneaks up on West and knocks him out. <coughs> West will be dreaming about his hemorrhoid donut. When West wakes up, he realizes Dr. Hill has stolen his work. I had to kill him! He's dead? Not anymore. Now they're definitely gonna get detention! In the short story, West and the narrator become involved in World War I. Their commanding officer is decapitated. West injects the body with the serum and places the head in a vat. The body begins thrashing around while the head screams from across the room. However, the building is then destroyed by a bombshell. So you see, the film is quite different. Hill's got this weird file on her. He's full of napkins and hair and photographs. <laughs> He's laughing because Hill also got that file from Dr. Gruber. Wait a minute. Maybe if I inject the doc with this ecto cooler I bought off eBay, we'll get a reaction. Here you go, doc. eBay. 
Don't fail me now. Dr. Otcoitus, welcome back to the land of the living! Andrew! Yes, Doc? What is it? My money! Again with the payment! Look, Doc, Evil already spent the $23! But... Maybe I can buy you a new fedora? Oh. Dr. Hill returns to his office and needs a refill. When I sneak into the kitchen to find a snack. He better garnish that Bloody Mary with celery or a pickle. Dr. Hill then hypnotizes the Dean into kidnapping his own daughter. Hill tries to hypnotize him repeatedly before remembering it's a one-way mirror. Worried, Dan goes to Megan's house and tries to save their relationship. I wanted so much to hate you. When you finally try pineapple on pizza. Sensing a kiss, the Dean breaks it up, knocks out Dan, and takes Megan. <laughs> Dad, you're embarrassing me in front of my boyfriend! Dr. Hill reanimates other corpses, performs brain surgery on them, and can control them telepathically. Breaking news! This just in, the head from Reanimator has been picked as the new Surgeon General! With Meg strapped to a table, Dr. Hill decides to get handsy. Or is that... Headsy? <laughs> He's looking for someone who's into necking. Dr. Hill confesses his love to Megan and works his way down. Oh, <laughs> Why did he have to use formaldehyde as mouthwash? Yep. This became known as the movie where the head gives head. Yes, my love. If the cops ask any questions, just use my line. Hey, that dead body was coming on to me. Dr. Hill is played by David Gale. When his wife saw the infamous head scene, she stormed out shouting, David, how could you? Shortly after, they got a divorce. I too am divorced. <sighs> yeah, you would know all about being separated. Before things get too X-rated, Dan and West arrive. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. Damn, that's the second time tonight. West has killed him. Needing backup, Dr. Hill then summons the reanimated corpses from the morgue. It's a morgue mutiny! <laughs> this is what happens when people wake up and there isn't any coffee. Megan's voice snaps her father out of it long enough for him to fight off the other zombies, giving them a chance to escape. You go take a dump for two hours, and this is what happens. Remembering the large dosage he gave Dr. Gruber, West comes up with a plan. Overdose! No. Michael Jackson's doctor entering his bedroom. The Dean grabs Dr. Hill's head and crushes it, releasing his telepathic control of the zombies. <laughs> that firing came with one hell of a severance package. Full of reagent, 
Dr. Hill's body mutates into a Lovecraftian spaghetti monster. <laughs> Stealing everybody's work and hitting on the boss's daughter did take some guts. Andy, I'm going to get you. Quiet, head shrinker, before I actually shrink your head. The Dean is ripped apart while West throws Dan his notes. He also bagged up all those hidden dildos. West is a brilliant, arrogant narcissist whose lack of respect for life and death is his downfall. West is dragged away while Dan has to fight off a bunch of naked zombies. <laughs> I've never had to edit around and censor so many dongs! Dan attempts to save Megan, but she too is strangled. What to do when someone farts in the elevator? Sadly, Dan still hasn't learned how to let go. Much like that hand. Dan rushes Megan to the emergency room, but all of his patients seem to die. But when I go around the hospital kissing dead bodies, I'm told to leave. In a stupid move that screams bad idea, Dan decides to use the reagent on Meg. So it's happened 100% of the time, but what are the chances that she'll become a zombie? <coughs> the ending is ambiguous, the consequences of the serum, and everyone's fate is uncertain. That is until the sequel. In the short story, Herbert's commanding officer survived the bombing and wants revenge. Now wearing a head of wax, with his original head in a black case, the Major spends the next year finding the other surviving experiments. Dang, a headless body gets out more than we do. With an undead army, the Major attacks West, who is torn apart for playing God, and the Major takes Herbert's head. I'll take your head. If you don't shut up, I'm gonna give you a swirly. Reanimator was a small success. With a budget of $900,000, it grossed two million in North America. However, the film really became successful once it hit home video and gained a cult following. The film's success eventually led to Bride of Reanimator in 1990 and Beyond Reanimator in 2003. Jeffrey Combs never read any Lovecraft and was taken aback by the script. He took the part because he needed the work and assumed nobody would see the film. Now it's the role he's most known for. I know him from Scooby-Doo. He was the voice of H.P. Hatecraft. Jeffrey Combs is outstanding as Herbert West, delivering a performance that brings a unique intensity. He's unsettling, yet charismatic, with a devilish sense of humor. With each reanimation, West becomes more unhinged, and Combs plays it perfectly. Herbert's obsession with beating death turns him into a monster, much like the corpses he reanimates. We can achieve every doctor's dream. We can defeat death. Meanwhile, death is laughing his ass off. Bruce Abbott as Dan Kane is us, the audience, taken on this wild journey of death. He's a reluctant accomplice that follows West to his own undoing. If only he learned how to let go. Barbara Crampton's Megan and David Gale's Dr. Hill round out the cast with memorable performances. That head scene became infamous. You know what? I think he's a silver fox. Is that your mother? 
Oh, God! He's sicker than I thought! The practical effects are great. From zombie cats to talking heads, the effects team created some outrageous visuals that still hold up. I also love that the art director was Robert A. Burns, who worked on the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Hills Have Eyes. The score for the film was composed by Richard Band and sounds a lot like Bernard Herrmann's score for Psycho, which according to Band, was intentional. How did he not get sued? Reanimator is equal parts horror, comedy, and satire, exploring the dangers of playing God. It's a humorous splatter flick that tackles mortality, science gone wrong, and the consequences of unchecked ambition. We failed. He failed. Not I. Something a failure would say. Stuart Gordon's direction masterfully balances the tension with absurdity. The tone is terrifying, yet playful. The over-the-top gore, dark humor, and campy performances cement the film's place in horror comedy history. Somebody help me! I can't itch my nose! I'm glad this gag is only for this video. Oh. We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Join our Patreon, hit the bell, and now watch another damn video.